And if the fruit from His presence, from Jesus' presence, His death and resurrection is purpose and possibility and meaning and hope and yes, peace itself, if He is the seed, then we are actually the soil in which the seed is planted. We are the vessels for a new and transformed life given to us by His sacrifice. In our reading this morning from Jeremiah, the Lord says, I will put My law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be My people. The seed is within us, waiting for us to nurture and to nourish it, to allow it to flourish and to grow and feed our own hearts and souls, and to even allow it to feed others with that same peace and love and purpose and hope and meaning that we've been given. Good morning, and welcome to the online worship of St. Matthew's Episcopal Church on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, March 21st, 2021. Our opening hymn is number 471, We Sing the Praise of Him Who Died. Good morning, and once again, welcome to our online worship for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And now, kneeling, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned, sinned against you. you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. The prophet foresees a new covenant between God and the people whom he loves. This covenant will be marked by the Lord's Spirit in their hearts rather than on tablets of stone. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they my law within them. They shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall read Psalm 51, verses 1 to 13 in unison. Have mercy, mercy on me, me O God, God, according to, to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, wickedness and, and cleanse me from my sin. sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and, and take, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give, give me the joy of your saving help again, again and, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Through obedience and suffering, Jesus opened the gates of the ki kingdom. He is named High Priest forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation 
for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand. Our gospel hymn is number 337. And now, O Father, mindful of thy love. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When I was in, uh, in junior high school, my brother Charlie was living in a small house down in Pauline, just off of Highway 56. He went down 56 and turned right at a roadside stand and went up a dirt driveway and then bent hard left and took you all the way back to the very back of the farmer's property where there were two rental houses. In one of the houses was a DJ, a disc jockey, who had the late night shift at WORD AM. Wonderful because the former owner of WORD, Tony Brooks, is here this morning. Billy Mack. Now, Billy, <laughs> Tony is laughing at that name. Billy was an interesting guy. And very often, Billy would, uh, because he worked at night, we'd come over there and Billy would be asleep 
stretched out on the front porch by a fan in the warm weather. Charlie's house that he shared with his wife, Joe, sat across from the other house, and it was tucked back a little bit into the woods. Beside the house was our dad's garden. Now, I think I've talked about it at Bible Bread and Wine in the past, about my dad's great plan for growing our own vegetables. You see, he asked the farmer that Charlie and Joe rented from to plow the stretch of land at the end of one of his fields that was usually just a pasture beside my brother's house. And that is how Daddy ended up with a one-acre garden, and I ended up as a kind of 13-year-old agricultural indentured servant. We planted tomatoes and cucumbers and squash and green beans and pole beans and field peas and bell peppers and hot peppers and collards and greens and turnips and lettuce and cantaloupes and watermelon and even a long row of pumpkins. Anybody have any idea how large an acre is? You see, in the old way of reckoning, an acre is one chain by one furlong. A chain is 66 feet. A furlong is 660 feet, which means an acre garden is 43,560 square feet. And all tended not just by an unskilled laborer, but a completely uninformed laborer. Yes, I'm having trouble with the microphone. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Now, the imagery of the Bible is very often agricultural in nature. Frankly, it's imagery that would have been far more understandable for a people that still live close to the earth. People who sowed and reaped, planted and tended and harvested the food they ate. I had a conversation with a friend who has a feed and seed store out in the country. I'd seen so few customers in his store over this last year of pandemic, and there never seemed to be much stock on hand. So I was worried that my friend was going to lose his business. They were going to have to close. So I asked him, he smiled and said this, 2020 was the best year we have ever had in the seed and feed, the farm supply side of the business. More people took up gardening than we've ever seen. And not flowers, but true gardens with tomatoes and squash and peppers and beans and greens of every kind that we could get and sell. You don't see anything in stock because everyone had wanted, everybody wanted to try and grow some of their own food. We completely sold out the greenhouse and couldn't keep garden items on the shelf. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Now remember, Jesus is illustrating his teaching with images his hearers could understand. But images also that always spoke to something greater than the image itself. After all, he wasn't talking about the death of a seed. He was talking about his own death 
and what would come of it. He was actually comparing himself to a seed. More than that, he was binding himself and all that he was doing to the image of the smallest kernel of what could be. You see, that's what seeds are. They are potential. Now see, as an unskilled and uninformed farm worker can tell you, are fascinating things. They can lie dormant for years. But once they've been planted and gotten water, even if they've been stored away unused for years, the potential for growth is there. I was reading an article a number of years ago, seeds from date palm were discovered stored away in the ruins of Herod's fortress in modern-day Israel. They were radiocarbon dated to between 1,800 and 2,400 years old. Botanists took several of them, soaked them in water, fertilized them, planted them and they began to grow. After 20 centuries, they were still able to thrive and produce fruit. A powerful image. And if Christ is the seed, what is the fruit? Our reading this morning from the Gospel according to John began with a straightforward question. Please, sir, we want to see Jesus. Why? What were they looking for? The text says that they are, these are Greek visitors. And it's the Greeks, not just the Hebrews, but rather the visitors, the Greeks, the sojourners in the land who are asking the question. And yet their cry is for the same thing the disciples were crying out for the same thing that you and I cry out for. Something to give meaning to our lives. To get answers to our questions. To finally understand why. Or at the very least, why not? And if not comforted or consoled by the answers, to know at the very least that there is purpose and meaning in life. And if the fruit from His presence, from Jesus' presence, His death and resurrection, is purpose and possibility and meaning and hope, and yes, peace itself, if He is the seed, then we are actually the soil in which the seed is planted. We are the vessels for a new and transformed life given to us by His sacrifice. In our reading this morning from Jeremiah, the Lord says, I will put My law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be My people. The seed is within us, waiting for us to nurture and to nourish it, to allow it to flourish and to grow and feed our own hearts and souls. And to even allow it to feed others with that same peace and love and purpose and hope and meaning that we've been given. Throughout the summer of my 13th year, my father and I, Daddy, we realized we had a dilemma. A single acre, even tended by an absolute amateur, produces an overwhelming abundance of produce. We ate it, we refrigerated and froze it, we canned it, we gave it to family members and friends. Eventually, we started anonymously gifting it to total strangers. If you left your car window rolled down, there was a good chance you'd find a sack of tomatoes in the front seat when you went back to your car. An overwhelming 
abundance. That's as good a definition of God's grace as I can give. So much, so great, that even when you think you've shared all you have, the garden, the seeds planted in that soil is producing more and more and more. The love of Christ is meant to be shared. So what does that look like right now? Over the course of a year, we've presented with we've been presented with overwhelming images. Images very often of anger and of hate. Most recently, the anger and hate that was acted out in Atlanta. For that matter, the despair that's shown in what's happening down on our border. The anger and hate that has been demonstrated against so many different communities in our country. You know, prior to the pandemic, when I was looking out on the faces of St. Matthews, about 25% of the folks that would gather here on any given Sunday are African American, Hispanic, Latinx, and Asian American. I have a nephew, a great nephew, two great nieces who are Asian American, who can tell you of the way people look at them. We have friends and family in this parish that are African American who can tell you how people respond to them. We have folks in our parish, we are so blessed to look like Spartanburg. But that also means that all the pain that gets expressed toward folks is also present within these walls. These walls now extending virtually to thousands. The point of this sermon really comes back to that last phrase that the love of Christ is meant to be shared. We need to share it with one another, we need to offer that grace to one another. And then we need to offer it to the world. The love of Christ is meant to be shared. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Please stand and join in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayer for spiritual growth. Gracious Father, we ask spiritual growth for ourselves, our families and friends, and especially for our family, St. Matthews. Grant us growth and understanding and willingness to be your body in this world. Empower us to live the mission of Christ, to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples. In joyful thanksgiving for the blessing of your presence in our lives, compel us to share you with everyone we meet. May our numbers increase, our commitment deepen, our lives be joyfully yours. Make us a God-centered people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace. Peace of the Lord. God's peace. God's peace. Please be seated. Folks, as you are watching this online this week, you'll notice a couple of little bumps in the recording. All completely my fault. Just so you'll know that. Um, you'll notice that we actually changed the microphone in the midst of this recording from the headset to the clip on. Apparently, as it was pointed out, my head must have grown in the last couple of weeks because the headset no longer fits. God bless you and thank you to the compassionate members of the congregation that are here this morning that have let me know that I've gotten a big head. <laughs> In any case, thank you all for being with us this morning. Uh, for anyone who would like to have a, a longer or more in-depth conversation about the reality of the different sorts of things that face members of our congregation, call me, or perhaps better yet, have a conversation with the folks that would normally be sitting beside you in the pew, not the person that looks like you do. Hmm. Now, thank you to everyone that is here today. Thank you to, uh, to our server, Angela. Thank you so much to, uh, to Doug and to Carol, uh, who are filming this. Thank you to our reader, Jean, to Tony, uh, and to Grace, and of course, to Father Paul. Thank you for everyone that makes this possible. A reminder that next week we will be in our parking lot for Palm Sunday, and the week after, we'll also be in the parking lot for Easter, and two weeks after that, we'll be in the parking lot again. We are going to more and more in-person worship with the hopes that very soon we'll be back together on a, on a more regular basis live and, and here in the church. And if we can't get everybody here in the church, we're going to spread out all over the grounds. Now, again, thank you for your generosity, your stewardship that makes all of this possible. You'll see a link at the end of this broadcast that will allow you to give online, or you can mail in your offering, you can bring it by the office. Your faithfulness makes the ministry of St. Matthew's possible. Ascribe the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with thanksgiving.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And, beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them, and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift to those who believe to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you, we, we praise, praise you, you, we bless, bless you, you, we give, give thanks, thanks to you, and pray, pray to you, Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, 
your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Andrew, our bishop, Dorsey, our bishop retired, Rob and Paul, our priests, Pat, our Piedmont Convocation Deacon, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember those on our parish prayer list and all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be relieved from their distress. Remember those who are full of joy. Protect them in their celebration. Remember the whole creation which you have made, and help us to use it wisely. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Matthew and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Rob the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Angelo, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Jean, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Grace, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Tony, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Carol, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Doug, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God, our merciful Father, grant you all the joy of returning, like the prodigal son, to the happiness of his house. Amen. May Christ, our model of prayer and living, guide you through the journey of Lent, to an authentic conversion of heart. Amen. Amen. May the spirit of wisdom and courage sustain you in the struggle against the evil one so that you may be able to celebrate with Christ the Paschal victory. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for going forth this day is number 441, In the Cross of Christ I Glory.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.